Hello, I'm attorney Michael Brown of DBG Law Partner. Uh, I represent individuals who are involved with shareholder employment and or contract disputes. Um, and if you're a shareholder and you have a dispute with other shareholders or with the company, and uh, you should know that you, you may have some legal rights that are strong. Um, and so this video gives an overview of some of those rights. I should note the video does not give legal advice for your specific situation. However, I do provide general information and five factors to consider with regard to any shareholder or employment dispute. Um, so, factor number one is to know that large financial loss is the biggest factor underlying most strong legal claims. If you've experienced large financial loss or are likely to experience large financial loss, you should consider an evaluation of your potential legal rights. Examples in the shareholder and employment context would include situation where other shareholders are providing themselves with large dividends or fees or bonuses or salaries or salary increases that are not being provided to you. Um, another example would include a job termination and or board removal situation where you have lost income as a result of those actions by other shareholders or by the company uh, affecting you negatively as a shareholder. So all those situations involving financial loss could underlie a strong potential legal claim. The second factor that I'd like to discuss is that you should not rely on your own legal assumptions. Um, it's a big mistake that a lot of people make, including smart and educated people, um, will go online on the internet and do some research about potential legal claims for employees or shareholders, and then arrive at conclusions based on that information that they see online. So a couple of common examples of legal concepts that people will make mistaken assumptions about include um, employment at will or the business judgment rule um, in the shareholder uh, litigation context. Often people read about these particular concepts and then make assumptions that these concepts will block their potential path uh, to a legal claim or successful resolution uh, for, for a legal matter. And I would just ask that you, you not uh, make assumptions based on information you see on the internet or that you've heard anecdotally. Um, an experienced attorney or judge uh, certainly could opine about those issues. And if, if one of those persons said, uh, hey, this concept or that concept or, or this combination of issues would block your potential rights, then certainly you should uh, pay attention to those informed sources. But other than that, I would not rely on your own assumptions and uh, looking into potential legal action. Um, the third factor I'd like to discuss is just the fact that dozens of potential legal claims may exist uh, for a shareholder and or employment dispute. Um, I, when I evaluate a case, I kind of go through my mind of dozens of potential legal claims that could apply to a situation. And as far as a shareholder context, a, a shareholder was an employee as well, uh, potential legal claims could include breach of fiduciary duty, uh, breaches of written or oral contract, uh, tortious interference with contract or with prospective uh, business or contract arrangement, uh, wrongful discharge contrary to public policy, uh, or violations of employment statutes, such as statutes involving unpaid wages, discrimination, retaliation, and so on. So there are all sorts of potential legal claims that could apply to a shareholder and or employment dispute. Um, and the large volume of these potential claims and potential defenses by an opponent um, are other reasons why you should not rely on your own assumptions because sometimes it usually is the case that if a non-attorney uh, researches one or another particular legal issues that's usually not comprehensive or fully informed. So the, the full list, so to speak, is often not known by a non-attorney and also uh, the potential strengths and weaknesses of any of those potential items on the list is not going to be known uh, by an attorney or a non-attorney who's not experienced with those particular claims. Um, a fourth factor I'd like to discuss is to that you not negotiate or make threats um, without knowing your legal leverage. And I use the term threats, you know, in, in the legal sense of uh, don't mention, you know, I'm going to get an attorney or I, I'm about to consult with an attorney or 
say mis, you know, wrongfully that you spoke with an attorney when you hadn't. Um, it, you, you don't want to talk about legal rights or attorneys or potential legal leverage unless you first know that legal leverage in fact exists and you have that, uh, that knowledge from an informed source, from an attorney, namely. Uh, so when, I, when I'm retained, sometimes I review correspondence back and forth between a shareholder and a company or other shareholders. Um, you know, 99 times out of 100, when I see those types of uh, communications between a shareholder or an employee and, and the, the opposing uh, parties, I usually will cringe at a number of things that are written and that I feel are mistaken or perhaps reveal a strategy uh, prematurely or things that are documented that are better not documented, things like that. So before you negotiate or communicate about potential legal matters, uh, please consider speaking with an attorney uh, to, to get information about potential legal claims and legal leverage and legal options. Uh, the fifth factor I ask you to take into account is that if you speak to an attorney, make sure you discuss potential financial risks, benefits, and values. And what I mean by this is that you want to know how much an attorney may charge you if the legal fees are by the hour. That's perfectly ethical and common uh, for legal representation. But what sometimes is not discussed um, through either party not mentioning it, you or the attorney, is how much are the fees likely to be uh, over time for this particular phase of issues, for example, for a negotiation phase or for a litigation phase before a, a first motion is anticipated by the other party, and so on. A, an attorney that's experienced with these matters could give you an estimate at any point in time about all or one or two phases that could be involved with your matter and just give you an idea of how much hourly fees are likely to be over time. An attorney could also give uh, odds, for lack of a better term, or indication of likelihood of success for potential claims or issues. And that's also something that should be discussed up front and also regularly during the course of representation if you are represented. Uh, because if you're going to make an investment out of pocket, then it's good to know, you know, what that investment is likely to accrue to over time and also the potential benefit or uh, return on that investment. Now, a lot of attorneys, including myself, will offer contingency fee arrangements or reduce fee arrangements for uh, litigation or negotiations or different uh, phases that can be involved with a dispute. Um, and for an attorney to do that, to offer uh, sharing of the financial risk, is indicating through uh, actions that they actually believe what they're saying if they're saying they think the likelihood is strong of you having a, a good result. So it's just important to be uh, mindful right from the beginning in talking with an attorney about likely value, if any, that you'd be paying out of your pocket and then likely return uh, on that investment. And if a contingency attorney similarly will want to be mindful of the potential value of a case and to be mindful of putting a lot of work potentially into a matter uh, if they think that, it, you know, depending on that matter's likelihood of success. So again, if an attorney is willing to talk candidly with you about investments and about risk sharing, uh, that's, that's saying something. Um, so th these, I hope these five factors are helpful. Uh, for you as a shareholder in a business and or employment dispute. And if I can be a further help, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.